Welcome back to another badass video from Network Engineer Academy. And by the way, this is video number two. So if you haven't watched video number one, make sure you watch video number one first and watch all of these videos in order. And that's just because I'm walking you through a process and how to build and how to configure this network, okay? So what I'm gonna walk you through and this video is right here. We are going to focus on this part of the network, okay? And they give us this IP address. So we need to work with this IP address to set up the PCs and this network, okay? And probably, I know some of you, you know this information, probably this is completely new to you. But what we have here is a class C IP address, okay? A private IP address, class C, private IP address, the 192.168.1.0. And the forward slash 25, that's the cited notation, and that basically, it's telling me, you know, the subnet mask. And remember, the subnet mask, it will tell you, you know, how many bits, okay, um, you're gonna use for the network, and how many for the host and the network, okay? And we are not, okay, we are not using the default subnet mask of a class C IP address, okay? We borrow one bit. That's the reason why we have 25. So the subnet mask will be 255, 255, 255, 128, okay? Now, make notes. If you don't get this right away because probably this is new to you, don't worry about it, okay? You're gonna get it more once we go through some other videos. Okay, so let me log into this computer. And what I'm gonna do, and you better do this as well, okay? I'm gonna statically put an IP address, okay? So let me walk you through that process. So I'm gonna open that computer, and I'm gonna go to desktop, and the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the command prompt. And I'm gonna do IP config because I wanna make sure if this PC has an IP address. And as you can see, no. No IP, no subnet mask, no default gateway. No, and now probably you're thinking, okay, what the hell is that default gateway? Well, let me tell you, okay, if you want the computers, the devices, and your network to communicate with each other, you do not need a default gateway. But if it gets to the point that you want that computer or your computers to communicate with another devices outside of your network, Yes, you need the default gateway because that's exactly how, you know, that default gateway is gonna help you to get to whatever destination you're trying to get to, okay? So at this point, because I wanna make it complicated because I don't have notes in front of me, you know, I'm just gonna go and I know my objective, my goal, and, and that's for me to set up the network. And I know, probably you're thinking about this network because I know a lot of you know this already, right? Like, hey, Jorge, you know why you didn't build a bigger network or what? I mean, that's many ways I'm building a small network, okay? And this is my network, so I'm gonna do it my way, okay? So, uh, yeah, let's set up an IP address and some that must based, okay, based on the IP address that we have, okay? So once again, let me log in on that PC and let me get out of here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to IP configuration and here on the IP address. And that's gonna be 192 that okay uh, 168 that one. Now the last acted. You see this is what we have. And based on the subnet mask, the subnet mask. Oh come on. That, let me give you the subnet mask first. 255 255 255 128. Based on that, we know that the first three okay acted the first three numbers they're not gonna change on my network, okay? Now, based also on the subnet mask, okay, and based on the network ID, that tells me that the IP address that I can use on my last acted is from the number one all the way to 126 because because the zero, that's my network ID, and the 127, that's the broadcast ID for the network. So for me to really use an IP, I can select anything that's from number one all the way to 126, okay? And in this case, because this is computer seven, so 
it's easy for us to remember. I'm just gonna assign, you know, the number seven. Now, once again, I'm not gonna put a default gateway right now, and we're gonna have some issues later, but that's fine, you know? Because let me tell you, once you go on the process of troubleshooting, it's even better because you're gonna get it more than just me walking you through and say, oh, if you do this and this, you're gonna get this result. Okay, next. You do this and you do this, you're gonna get the result. Next, no. You know, you're not gonna get as much information if walking you through a process that you have to think, like, okay, what's going on? Why this is not working? Okay, let's check this. Okay, let's check, let's, uh, check the other. You know, that's exactly how you need to go through this process in the IET, okay? And troubleshooting, and thinking, analyze things, okay? So I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna go to this computer, okay? And I'm gonna do the same, and I'm gonna go faster because I already walked you through this process. So once again, I'm gonna do IP config and nope, I have nothing. So I'm gonna go to IP configuration and I'm gonna do, this is PC6, so I'm gonna do PC6, the number six. 192, 168, that one, those numbers do not change because of the subnet mask and that's six. And then that's the default subnet mask of a class C IP address and we are not using that. We borrow one bit and that's the reason why we have that 128 and we are done. Now here, okay, um, I'm gonna do the same, and I'm gonna go and I do IP config, and nope, I don't have anything, so I'm gonna go to IP configuration, and statically, right, I already walk you through and the process of DHCP that we are not using in this lab. So 192, 168, that one, that. Now, as you can see, this is PC150. And obviously we cannot use that 150 because you know this by now, right? Like we can only use from the number one all the way to 126. So 150, that's not good, okay? So uh, let's do 15, okay, let's do 15. Uh, and then 128 and that's it, bam. Now, up to this point, we haven't done anything on the switches. So let's think like, it's like getting the switch out of the box, put them on the table, plug it in, and that's it. We just put the IP address on the computer. So now let's find out if these two computers or those three computers are able to communicate with each other. So let's do that so we can end this video, okay? So let me do this. First, I'm gonna use the same command just to make sure that now I have some IP settings on my computer, and I do, so that's good, and it looks good. So now I'm gonna do ping, and I'm gonna ping one of the other computers. And that's gonna be ping 192. That 168, that one, that, and we can ping the 15. And yes, we are getting a reply. So basically that computer is saying, hey, I'm here, what's going on? You wanna talk to me? Okay, now let me do the other one. And that's six. And yes, good so far, okay? So now let me go to PC15 and do the same. So I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna go command prompt. And once again, I'm gonna first see if I have settings, I do. So then I'm gonna do ping. And for those that I know some of you know, Ping uses this protocol called ICMP, okay? And if I were you, I will write it down and I'm not gonna tell you, but you should Google it. Okay, let me Google ICMP. Do some research. This is the best way for you to learn, not for me to tell you everything, okay? Okay, so let's go back. So 192, that 168, that one, that we have seven. And yes, so, yeah, it seems that all the computers are able to communicate with each other, okay, up to this point. But what happened? You know, the CEO comes and she's like, you know, Jorge, this is not right. You know, this computer on the top, that's from the HR department and it has a lot of files, a lot of information from all of the employees. So I don't want any of these computers to have any access at all with this computer. So do something about it. That's the reason why you know, I'm giving you good money, do something about it. And I'm like, okay, one, that's a few ways in, in doing it, but the way that I'm gonna walk you through it's by creating VLANs. And that's exactly uh, what I'm gonna do on video number three. Remember, this is video number two. So go to video number three so that I can walk you through the process. But so far right now, the computers are communicating with each other. So I'm gonna talk to you on video number three.